don't you also love it that when you open the game and then the world like generates and then there's lots of stuff back to back such as the stage or the rook nose or the buffalo or like a pig village that conveniently happens to be near the wormhole that got you to the buffalo in the first place and then you find Chester and then you claim everything as your own achievement and then almost none of this stuff end up mattering at all since like you could just grab the buffalo and find all of the stuff while traveling in super speed the good thing about an early stage though I must say is that you can get the role for a miner's hat just by reciting the most charismatic speech known to mankind I would like to take a moment to thank Vanda for her outstanding performance on our stage today. Have I already mentioned how I think that health is an overrated resource purely in terms of survival or how I think that Vanda is actually pretty good at tagging stuff in the early game? Like the small chunks of damage you receive isn't even that relevant. And Wanda already has a solution to that inside of her inventory Which is why I tend to not play her as carefully as you would expect Like almost any situation that puts me into the risk of dying is not exclusive to Wanda anyways At least in the early game so while I will not be smacking a tall bird or something without any armor, I always appreciate Wanda taking a bullet for me and not making a big deal out of it. She is just too good at overcoming skill issues. Well, anyways, the reason I'm playing Vanda is simply because I love big numbers, especially if they have decimals. It's also because people seem to be more interested in seeing a Vanda playthrough, and I was actually really close to trolling everyone who put all their faith into me by playing Wolfgang. Then I remembered that my channel was that for the last six months and decided to be at least a nice person for once. My goal in this run is going to be real simple, gain access to the 142.8 as soon as possible and start investing in the future. Even though I will be trying to complete as many objectives as possible before day 50, I won't be setting myself any other time limitations other than that. On one hand, this means that my game plan is not going to be strictly centered around killing all the beneficial bosses as fast as possible, even if it might seem like that from time to time. On the other hand, this also means that my character choice doesn't even matter that much, but like, come on. Hearing the sound of the alarming clock in the hands of old Lando while smacking enemies around and melting them all down is probably the best guilty pleasure out there.
here I have found a good container for this base. Bequeen near the shadow chess pieces set piece is probably my favorite combination for when choosing my first base location. I almost always fight those two back to back and I always appreciate a checkpoint near Big even when I abandon my first base and resettle somewhere else. Apart from being a future drop point for items with less priority, an abandoned checkpoint also has an undeniably big advantage of just looking real awesome. Oh, and finding that bishop set piece actually created a short circuit in my brain which led to a chain of questionable decisions. In my head, the route was to first drop my items at the location I went to base in, then to craft a pressing hesitator, and lastly to visit the rooms without actually doing magic. That way I could return the Magiluminescence, a two-side club and a circular stuff well before day 11 and revisit the ruins later. But as soon as the purple gems entered my pockets, I was like, who is the stupid ruins anyways? But then I also remembered that I needed the other gems as well and kept pretending that the two gems I got from the bishops were more than enough to save me like a gazillion days and did lots of side quests as a result. Like building a whole base with a kitchen and turf and stuff. I must warn you about the following footage which was performed by professionals and may be extremely disturbing for some viewers so watch at your own discretion and don't try to attempt the same at home or at public servers. Did you know that you don't actually need the geo placement mod for like a base that looks well enough? Like I have nothing against geo placement, don't get me wrong. I think it's a really cool mod and it always makes its way to my own worlds as soon as I relocate my base to the oasis desert. But the results you achieve by using this mod is actually possible just by looking more carefully at your screen or by walking in a straight line or by using your pitchfork to measure and not resorting to the geometric placement mode also has its own advantages like being able to place corn pots like much tighter and being able to place boats more reliably. And I know that the mod also has a toggle button to turn it off but for the sake of my own life I needed to provide a reasonable explanation as to why I don't think the mod is a necessity. I just don't like using mods until I start with the actual mega basing stage which is honestly not that often. And this is just a self excuse to keep me from going insane in real life while I am trying to align two imaginary objects without using a digital ruler or something just to impose my own tryhard rules onto myself.
the game allowing you to perform dark rituals as soon as you learn to pull a rabbit out of a hat as the single best feature in the entire game. And conversely, Wanda's entire damage perk being locked behind the tier 2 magic can be explained with a single word. Balls. There is no denying how good the alarm and clock is or that Wanda got the favorite child treatment. But this early on, the only two weapons that she can utilize for her perks are locked behind the same crafting tier. Which I think is a shame because I would always play crafting the alarm and clock to a later stage if there were lower tier shadow equipment alternatives Wanda could benefit from. I would also be using Wanda and speed runs in that case which I honestly have tried to do way and I mean way too hard. Wanda is just sadly way too good at survival but pretty average at fast paced speed runs which I guess is an okay compromise. Like she already does bonkers damage and can do more than well enough on living lock stock if she kills like a single tree guard. She also doesn't need to waste time collecting materials for healing since everything she needs for an infant life support system requires a single and real short time investment. This is why I kind of get why some players criticize Wanda for being way too good or for being like way too one dimensional. But like I will also never understand people religiously defending that a character being good is a bad thing. Um, Cannon. 